Hi friends, do you find yourself losing things when you're outdoors? If you're like me, you do. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce the TR-13, the incredible sensing robot. It can locate any object, even in the dirtiest of areas. Check it out. Oh my, I've lost my pen. TR-13, can you find my pen? Ow! Robots and humans are working closer than ever before, and since human sensing awareness is not likely to improve anytime soon, that means it's up to the robots. One way this is being made possible is the Fitness Project, led by the Fraunhofer Institute for High Frequency Physics and Radar Techniques, FHR. They are developing intelligent skin for robots. The skin uses flexible metamaterials and metasurface antennas, the antennas are integrated into stretchable substrates, allowing them to adapt to the robot's shape. This innovation enables precise gesture recognition, beam forming, and effective communication with base stations. The robotic skin possesses cutting edge technology I'll share with you coming up. But first, let's check out our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Siemens Synamics G120X Drive is a cost-efficient, robust solution that integrates seamlessly with existing systems and supports various motor types. It's specifically designed for energy efficiency and resource-saving operation, which helps reduce overall costs. The Drive meets the latest industry standards for energy efficiency and safety, featuring SIL-3 rated safety functions and a high short circuit current rating of up to 100 kilo amperes. It is also fully compatible with digitization efforts, making it a future-proof choice for a wide array of modern applications, as well as energy efficiency enhancements like eco mode and hibernation. The Siemens Synamics G120X drive optimizes system performance, protects against issues like blockage and dry running, and much more. Check it out today at mauser.com. It's time to get educated. It's time for David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. I want to take a moment to talk about a new kind of protocol that's being seen in more and more I.O. devices. Now, I.O. means input and output, usually meaning like contactors, solenoids, sensors, those field level devices that get information and send actions back into the system. This protocol that I want to talk about is called I.O. Link. And it's actually a standardized protocol that is gaining a lot of traction, but it can be a little bit confusing. So I wanted to define what it means and a little bit about how it works. Now, first it involves a little bit more equipment. First, we have what look like fairly familiar sensors, and they actually can be used in many cases, just like standard discrete sensors. These are a couple of optical proximity sensors. When we read the data sheet, we can see that they are IO link enabled. Now that means that there's extra information that can be sent from the sensors, often about how the sensors themselves are performing, but we can also get multiple pieces of data back to our system through only one wire. We supply power, we supply ground, but that one signal wire, instead of just providing a trip point like a normal proximity sensor, instead we can supply multiple trip points, which can create a window or a range of operation. We can also get extra analog data. Analog means not only whether an object is within a field of view, but how far away it is as well. This is the difference between a proximity and a distance sensor. So by using this protocol, we've created a lot more flexibility in our system, even though we're still sticking with standard sensors. It's not only the sensors, the field devices themselves that are necessary for IO link, but the connectors, which normally use the standard M12 connectors, go back to an IO link hub or a master device. An IO link hub allows input of multiple IO link and also discrete devices, so you can still use your old discrete devices, but they can also then be distributed back to a network like Ethernet or Profinet to communicate back to our PLC system. So instead of completely overhauling a system, which is difficult, it creates a lot of downtime, and it can often be very confusing, Instead, we can integrate different parts of a system or slowly create additions while still using our legacy devices, but instead increasing to newer devices that give us much more ability to interface not only with the product that's moving down the system, but also the pieces of the system themselves to make sure that we're providing the right maintenance exactly when we need it. Andy, back to you. 
To create a robot that can work closely with humans, researchers are developing a novel antenna solution that enables beamforming. Beamforming is a process used to control the radiation properties of an antenna electronically, which allows the electromagnetic beam to adjust and always face the base station. This results in a stronger, more stable signal and extended robot range. Traditionally, beamforming is supported by phased arrays, where multiple antennas work together to control signal direction, but this method is costly and prone to heat and errors. Metasurface antennas offer a more efficient alternative with streamlined electronics, reducing costs, and enabling more compact designs. This new design concept also allows for greater freedom in field emission and improved gesture signal extraction. These antennas can be utilized or potentially utilized in all of these applications. This technology is truly amazing. To stay updated to the latest in control automation, be sure to check out our other episodes of Automator's Edge and we'll see you next time.